Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about listing languages. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as you say that companies do not care about the number of programming languages you know, but rather about the one specific language they use, would you agree that one shouldn't list all the languages he knows in his CV when applying for a certain position in a specific company, but rather stress the knowledge of the language they use? I'm asking because there's an opinion uh, because there is an opinion that I do that it doesn't matter whether or not you sh you know a certain language if you know f some of the languages, for example C++ or C sharp C sharp developers could very well take on a C sharp position and vice versa. Therefore, does it really make sense to list all the languages you know if you know several on a CV? And if the assumption above is true, does it make sense to learn any other languages except maybe JavaScript, which stands apart in a way, if switching is such a no-brainer? Well, if I understand you correctly, your your the root of your question is: it Does it make sense to list all your languages? Well, yes, it does make sense, and you should. If you know multiple languages, you should absolutely list them. But I at the same time don't try to pretend like you are you're a master of all of them if you're unless you're you are of course if you are a master of all of them go for it but just listing things on a CV is a good thing in of itself even if it's not important to the company because of two factors one factor is and that's the primary thing it is that it shows that you have experience that goes beyond perhaps the average developer because the average developer only knows one or two languages like the or the the that, that's usually how it goes like you may think that people are these polyglot programmers but on average they're not like the average software developer is not a like a super senior a superhuman software developer they may have dabbled in a few things here and there but for the most part they've only really worked in one or two languages and so if you have multiple ones that act, that's going to look good now you may ask why does that look good if it does if the company doesn't care about it well this is the thing the company doesn't care if you know how many languages you, you know they care about you being good at the thing that they do but you have to understand that just as a you might be extremely attracted to someone who's very good looking but find out later that you hate their guts because they have a shitty personality or that like they're a bad person a company is going to get a hard on for you if you have a CV that communicates that you're really really good because by if you have a lot of languages and you know a lot of stuff the naive human that uh, is reading your CV is in many cases just gonna go wow this person must be really good because they know all this advanced stuff they're probably as good at the language that we are using that's what they're gonna think it's like it's the famous uh, fame problem as well like some people will listen to a celebrity who they should really not be listening to not uh, when they express an opinion about something they know nothing about and the only reason you're listening to them is because they're on TV. It's the same thing. Like you, you why, there's a wow factor to to this thing. It's the same thing if you, okay, why do you think there's so many people who want to work for Google? If you just get Google on your CV or Facebook or whatever, a, a, a bunch of complete I idiots who have no idea how to evaluate whether or not some someone is good or bad, is that they're gonna go, wow, this person must be really good because they worked for this very prestigious company. For all they know, you you were changing the coffee mugs, so it's uh, it's the same thing. That is the primary reason why you want to put effort into your CV because it is something that will give you a first impression towards the person who's doing the hiring. That's not enough itself going to be enough for you to land the job because there's still going to be an interview, there's still going to be a code test or something like that most likely. So you're still going to have to prove yourself. But the initial reaction, whether or not you get the call, that is completely down to this thing. It's completely down to how much you can wow somebody on paper and a lot of languages is a very good thing. You should be a little bit careful on the other hand because if you try to embellish too much or if you try to 
make it sound to be good to be true, people are going to be suspicious. An example is if you've never worked as a professional and you practically have no education and you claim to know every stack from here to the US, uh, it's going to seem unfeasible. If you list 10, 20 things uh, that you and you never actually worked, I'm just going to, as the recruiter or the interviewer, assume that, yeah, you've dabbled a little bit here and there. Uh, it's still a good thing for you. Uh, you should know that even for a junior developer, it's a good thing because it shows that second thing, which is extremely important. It shows enthusiasm for your craft, which is a very important thing to, uh, to practically every single company. It's extremely rare that uh, you uh, hire unmotivated or uh, like people who don't really push it as junior developers this is why I've told you in other videos that usually in the beginning of your career it's actually fairly important that you show passion and enthusiasm for the work because without it nobody's gonna take a chance on you most of the time simply because hiring a junior developer is always an investment and most people want to feel secure in that they're going to get a return on that investment and that's really hard to believe when you're dealing with someone who is only doing the school school work or who is only doing the bare minimum it's really really tough for you to prove uh, or to p convince somebody that you are going to be a really good investment and you're going to learn quick and you're going to do go the extra mile if you don't show it somehow and this is a very good way for you to show that you are that passionate person who really goes the extra mile because you really enjoy the craft it shows incentive uh, it shows uh, initiative and enthusiasm for the craft which is a, it's a it's a perfect thing uh, when it comes to communicating that you're a good candidate on paper so what I want you to take away from this is that you should absolutely add all your languages even if it doesn't matter to your CV because it adds weight to to the CV. It is something that shows that you are interested in programming to an extent that goes beyond what your company is requiring you to know. And just as every single human on the planet if you can make it seem like you're really good, if you can communicate that, most people who are doing the hiring in, a, in these companies will just assume that you're just good across the board. That's not necessarily true, but it is the thing that they will assume. And that is a very good thing for you when you're looking for a job. You still, of course, have to be able to do the work in the language that they are using, because that's the thing that they really care about. But when they're trying to find people, that wow factor that you do a lot of extra cool stuff is going to factor in. It's going to factor in every single time, even though it may not be the only thing that determines if you get the job. It's still a very good thing. Have a great day.